spiritual healing from the parasha, mishpat, parashat mishpatim, what are the six constant mitzvot and how do, and how do we practice them? So one thing, what, so I'll just tell you a personal experience I had when many years ago, it was actually in 2014, and I was um, on my annual speaking tour in South Africa this time. I was staying in a house that also had a, a family dog. And now there's a lot of gates in South Africa in case you're this familiar, this was in Johannesburg. And there was a gate separating one half of the house from the other half of the house. So the dog could only stay in one half and not in the other half. And uh, the half that I was staying in was separated by that gate with the bathroom. So, so, um, so the family was instructed to leave the door unlocked for me so that I'd be able to go to the bathroom in case I needed in the middle of the night. Okay. So I went to sleep and then I woke up in the middle of the night and I went to open the gate that was supposed to be unlocked, but it was locked. And somebody came home late maybe from the family and then didn't hear the instruction. So I couldn't go to the bathroom. <laughs> what should I do? Um, and then I found there was a back door from my room to the garden. That's all I could do. So I went out to the garden and when I was ready to return to my bed, it was cold outside, it was February. Even in South Africa, it was quite cold. So I um, somehow, I'm not so good with locks and doors. And the door had shut locked on me. That was the kind of door it was. So I was basically stuck in the garden, in a cold garden, in the middle of the night, with nothing to do, no books, no, no, no phone, no, nothing. Actually, it was Friday night, so it was Shabbos, so no phone for sure. What should I do? So that's when I remembered, ah, there is this six constant mitzvot. I can, that's all I can do. I could be, I could do something important. I could do a mitzvah of remembering the six constant mitzvot here. That's all I could do. And I did that for many hours. And that was kind of consciousness expanding. And this is uh, what I want to share with you. Because when you can do this mitzvot and what the mitzvot are, and keep in mind, you can always do them anytime when you're waiting for someone or something. Also, there's a custom to make an effort to ponder the six constant mitzvot, doing the blessing that comes right that, that precedes immediately the Shema every morning. So what are the six constant mitzvot? So, oh no, some people. So there are six constant mitzvot that apply to all Jews in all places and in all time. And they also, duties of the heart. So you don't need anything. You don't need a lulav to shake it. You don't need uh, wine to make kiddush. You don't need anything. You just need to have a heart. <laughs> and these six mitzvot correspond to the six cities of refuge, designated places where an intentional, unintentional murder can flee to escape possible revenge by one of the victim's family. And sometimes we can also extend the concept of unintentional murder to of sorts could be the yatsara, the negative impulse. And these six mitzvot are constant cities of refuge where we can flee from the yatsara. And that's based on an article by Rabbi Ari Enkin. So there is in Parashat Mishpatim, there is a reference to the cities of refuge, and that is in chapter 21, verse 13. But one who did not stalk him, but God brought it about into his hand, like unintentional killing, I will make a place for you to which he shall flee. And Rashi says, 
that these are the these place of refuge refers to the 48 cities designated to the Levites. And we know that these six cities, I'm sorry, that these 48 cities include the six cities of refuge, as uh, we have actually a pasuk about it, a very clear pasuk that says, in Bamitba, among the cities you shall give to the Levites shall be six cities of refuge, which is you shall provide as places to which a murderer, unintentional though, can flee. In addition to them, you should provide 42 cities. So altogether, they have 48 cities, and six of them are the six cities of refuge. To say Fahinoch explain what they actually are. These are the six mitzvot that we are obligated to keep constantly. We really need to know them. We should never ignore them, even for a moment during all of our lives. And what are they? One, to believe in Hashem. Two, not to believe in anything besides Him. Those are the first two commandments. Three, to conceive of Hashem's oneness. Four, to love Him. Five, to be in awe of Him. Six, not to wander after the foreign sorts of our heart and a vision of our eyes. So these are the six constant mitzvot. And, and the mnemonic is six cities of refuge shall be for you. So Rav Ginsburg has a very um, interesting way of explaining these six constant mitzvot and how they correspond to different the six different directions in a cube. So he says, it's like the six walls of our house. The ceilings is that we always have to remember God is about us, above us. The floor is always to remember not to worship and bow down to anyone other than God. The front wall reminds us that God is one. The wall to the right and the left is to love and be in awe of God. The back wall, and by extension the, extension, the back door teaches us not to sneak out the, out the back and stray from the ways of the Torah. So, Rav Gein's book, just to make it clear again, he says, the constant mitzvah, one, believe in, a, in the existence of God that's above, not believing in other gods is below, believe that God is one, is in front or to the east, love God, the right side to the south, fear God, the left side to the north, not to stray after negative thoughts is behind to the west. And then he adds that the middle point in the middle of all, like in the middle of the house, in the middle of these six directions, that is prayer. That's like the seventh dimension. And so I made a, I made a meditation that's quite long to, to uh, work on experiencing So experiencing these these um, six constant mitzvot together with meditating on that the direction where they're to be found. So are you ready? Make yourself comfortable and breathe slowly and mindfully. Ah. Okay, good. Allow your thoughts to pass through you without judging them. Imagine each thought as a gust of wind blowing on your face and then subsiding. Envision yourself enveloped by divine lights from all six directions. Visualize the first the light above you. Breathe into this light and envision 
how it's spreading downward, enveloping you from below. Now breathe the light, breathe the light into your into your front, into your front. Allow it to become your guiding light. Keep breathing light into your right side and then to your left. Finally, allow the, allow the light to spread to your backside, protecting you from the rear. As you visualize the shining light on you from above, mentally recite the first commandment from the Torah. I am Hashem your God who has taken you out of the land of Egypt from the house of slaves. Anochi Hashem elokecha asher hotzitzicha mi'eretz mitzrayim mi'bet avadim. Notice how this mitzvah, not only believing in God, is, is not only believing in God passively, passively but it moreover implies believing in Him actively as a redeemer. Now anchor, anchor into your constant awareness. There is a power who takes you out of all the states of bondage, bondage and confinement. In Hebrew, the word Mitzrayim, Egypt, also means Mitzarim, confinement. Let yourself be filled with the infinite feeling of trust, bitachon, and God. Imagine your connection to God as a rope. Envision yourself climbing upward on this rope. Whenever you may feel confined or trapped by your present state of being, you can at any time break through the feeling of confinement and rise to live at a higher level of reality through your belief in the one and only in God. Now visualize the divine light below as you mentally recite the second commandment from the Torah. You shall have no other gods before you. Lo yelcha Elohim acharim lefanai. Imagine the divine light from below, disintegrating any, any trust in anything but God that you may ever have had. It could be a natural spiritual force. It could be angels, doctors, medicine, and the power of your own strength. Your sincere and single-minded commitment to Mimut, to God, will allow you to realize that all reality is controlled by no one but God. So breathe into that concept and focus below, below your feet. Your steadfast immuna prevents you from disconnecting from the rope of belief in God and protects you from falling down into the earthly quicksand of reliance on natural forces. Envision the divine light in front of you as you mentally recite the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, God is our God. God is one. Keep breathing slowly as you contemplate the absolute unity of God. Review in your mind how all your experiences ultimately originate from one single source, God and that God is the only ultimate reality 
whose essence encompasses all being. Contemplate how God's unity implies that everything we experience comes from and is God. If God is absolute goodness, it follows that everything must be ultimately good. What appears to be bad is only due to our warped vision, distorted by our own idea of how things should be. Hear, O Israel, God. The, the name Havaya, the compassionate, kind God, is our God, the name Elohim, Elokeno, who appears to us through his attribute of judgment. God, the Hashem, is one. Everything is but an aspect of Hashem's absolute kindness. Envision that divine light to you right now as you mentally recite. You shall love Hashem your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Once you have contemplated Hashem's unity, you are now ready to open your heart and let it be filled with the love of God. Let the question, who could desire anything other than Hashem, Caress your right arm, chest, and shoulder. Get in touch with how your awareness that God is the ultimate source of all reality and how it arouses your love of him. Envision the divine light to your left as you mentally recite. Now, O Israel, what does God, what does God, Hashem, your God, ask of you but to fear. When you genuinely love God, you will, you would never, ever want to do anything that could separate yourself from him. Anything that is against the Torah. Tap into your fear of severing your bond of love with Hashem as you breathe into your left arm, chest, and shoulder. Focus on both your right and left side, the tendon of your love and awe of God. These two mitzvahs together become the wings of the soul, which constantly elevate all our good deeds, prayer, and Torah learning to Hashem. Now envision a divine light to you rare as you mentally recite. You shall not stray after your heart and after your eyes. This is the mitzvah of guarding your mind and heart from foreign thoughts and desires to protect your precious relationship with God from disillusion. Understand how foreign enticement Prevent your life from being truly productive. Ask Hashem for strength and protection from the temptation, from the temptation of looking for God in paths or trips other than the Torah. Ask for protection from allowing these kinds of thoughts to catch you off guard. 
now envision divine light both in front of you and behind you as you tune into the the tandem of Hashem's unity while steering clear of foreign thoughts. Tap into the light. Tap into the light above and below you, above your head and below your feet. As you recall and anchor yourself to the two first mitzvot of the Ten Commandments, they believe in one God above and the denial of any other deity or independent power below. Take some slow, deep breath and recall each of the six constant mitzvot and their respective directions from your right and your left side, in front of you and behind you, and above and below. See if you can remember it. From your right, love of God, your left, awe of God, in front of you, the unity of God, behind you, not straying after foreign gods, sorry, not straying after foreign thought. Above, you believe in one God, and below, the not believing in any other God. Repeat this while visualizing yourself surrounded by divine light from all these six directions. Focus your awareness of the middle of the six-sided cube that you are now meditating from. From within this inner place of the seventh dimension, open your heart to express your deepest innermost prayer. Ask Hashem for the one thing you desire most in life. Then recite the Ani Tefillah and I am prayer from Tehillim 109.4. Repeat this phrase with the intention that my entire existence is prayer. Ve'ani tefillah. Now imagine offering your eye to surrender it to the infinite, all-powerful creator as your highest prayer. And when you're ready, you can then Open your eyes.